I'm going to be going over everything about packing cubes from the kind of packing cubes that there are to the benefits of packing and packing cubes and even the methods of packing into those packing cubes. So stay tuned. And make sure you stay tuned to the end where I go over which packing method packs the most into those packing cubes. Now, why packing cubes? Yes, everybody can pack just as is into a suitcase any way they like it. But what you'll find if you go on a multi-city tour is that things become disheveled really quickly. And I learned this long before they were making packing cubes. And that was, I thought, the biggest and most stressful problem there was. So here are the reasons why you should pack in packing cubes. Well, they do keep your luggage very organized. The second reason is, is that it keeps you very organized if you're taking your stuff and putting it into drawers and hotel rooms. Which brings me to the third good reason. Now, you don't know how clean those drawers are in those hotel rooms. And a packing cube helps to protect your clothing from any dirt in those drawers. And finally, packing cubes can help you pack more stuff into your luggage. Now, this is both a good and a bad thing because the good thing is you're getting more stuff in your luggage. The bad thing is, is that some airlines will weigh your luggage and if your luggage is over their limit and you've overpacked, then they're gonna charge you for that. So this is something you have to keep in mind. Now, there are two basic types of packing cubes. You have a regular packing cube like this, which has just one zipper, and that's it. You put your clothing in here and you pack it up. And the second kind is compression cubes. And compression cubes pack your clothing down inside your luggage. Now this is a Gonex, and Gonex was voted the number one compression cube in travel and leisure for this year. And there's several reasons for that. One, it's very light. And the other is, is that all good compression cubes should have two zippers with two different colors for a very good reason. The first zipper is just to open and close the packing cube. The second zipper, which should be, I'm gonna put it up here, and you'll see here this one is black. It should be for compressing your clothing down. This way you know if you're compressing or you're just opening it up to get your stuff out. Now, a lot of people will say that there is no difference between this cube compression cube and a regular packing cube because they can pack everything into this without it being compressed if that's the way they want to go. But there is a big difference. Most compression cubes uncompressed measure 2.75 inches, where most regular packing cubes measure four inches. Now that makes a big difference depending on your style of packing. And I'm going to show you the difference when I go to pack this cube uncompressed and this cube, and you'll see how much more I can get into this cube than this cube. Now, there are two other differences in packing cubes. There are packing cubes that come like these two, which have webbing on them, and there are compression cubes and packing cubes that come with kind of a covering or a thin layer, or you can't see through the bag. Now, they both have their benefits. Packing cubes with webbing like this, you can always see what's inside the bag and they let your clothing breathe, which is very important. But on the other hand, everybody can see everything. So if you get one that has that is not transparent on the front, you don't have to worry about people unpacking your bag at the TSA and maybe seeing your undergarments. But I don't really worry about that because all I do is I just generally pack with my bag flipped over and there's, and there's nothing I really care that I want to hide. That aside, there is another fundamental difference. Now the packing cubes that are not transparent like this do serve a good purpose. First of all, if they're closed in totally, you have any stinky clothing, it's not going to spread throughout your suitcase. The second thing is, if you're taking a beach vacation and you're getting some sand on your clothing, it's not gonna get all through your suitcase. So you might wanna consider what kind of packing cube you're using, whether it's a webbed packing cube or one that's where it's totally concealed, because they definitely do serve different purposes. Now, as you can see here, I am packing my regular packing cube using the rolling method, 
with both long and short sleeve shirts. And you can see that I can get nine into that packing cube and close it up with no problem. And as you can see here, I'm using the exact same shirts in a compression cube open, and you cannot get in nine shirts no matter what. Now you'll also notice in that demonstration, I could not compress that compression cube once I got in those eight shirts. So this leads me to having you overpack with a compression cube if you can't get in more than eight and the other one could get in nine. I'm gonna show you why. Now, as you can see here, I have five shirts that I can compress in the compression cube very easily. So I can get two of those now inside my suitcase, but that means you have 10 t-shirts now and not nine which means if you keep adding that up and all the way through your pack, you're gonna be packing a lot more weight. So this is something you have to decide on based on your airline and how much your luggage ultimately is gonna weigh. Now I use both regular packing cubes and compression cubes, but I use them for different purposes. I use this for most of my regular packing needs. And I use this for bulkier items, say like jackets or a bulky sweater, which I don't tend to take, but sometimes I do if I have to and I'll use a compression cube to keep all the air down out of it. So there are benefits to both kinds of packing cubes. Now, there are many ways to pack a packing cube. You can pack by type, you can pack by outfit, you can pack by day of the week. That's up to you. I mean, I personally pack by type of item. I find it easier to go through my, my suitcase that way. There are many ways to pack those packing cubes. You could do a flat pack, it's usually how most of us fold our clothing when we put them in the drawers. And the plus side to that is when you put it into a packing cube, it's quick and easy and you just got it out of the drawer. The downside is that you can't see everything in the packing cube. You have to kind of rustle through the packing cube to see what you have in there. There's the rolling method, which keeps your clothing nice and neat. And I find personally a little less wrinkly than with the other methods, but then again, you also have a top layer and a lower layer as you saw in that previous demonstration of me using the packing cube versus the compression cube. Another method is the army roll, which is a modified regular roll, but it keeps your clothing all tightly rolled together unlike a regular roll. Now, the plus side is that everything stays in place really nicely. The downside is, is that it takes longer and like the regular rolling method, you don't see everything. The final method is the Kamari method. Now that method has you folding and putting into your packing cube as if it was a file cabinet. And this, you'll see everything that you have, but it takes a little bit longer. Now, personally, I use the rolling method, but my husband likes the Kamari method for most of his t-shirts because he can see what he has in there and he has a, quite a collection of t-shirts. So this is a personal choice and I'm not promoting it a single way, but I will show you all the methods there are. And please tell me your favorite methods of packing in the comments below, because I love to hear from you guys. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the same t-shirt to show you all four packing methods. This is the flat fold. And in case you don't know, or you don't do it, it's just a basic, you fold to the center like this. And then you fold to the other side to the center. And I want to show this to you using the side of your packing cube, no matter what, whether it's compression or regular, you want to get the width of the side of it before you're folding it up. And when you're doing a flat fold like this, what you want to do is fold it not only to the width, but also to the height so that you get the maximum use out of the packing cube. And this shows you that it fits in there just perfectly. The next method is the rolling method. And it starts off pretty much like the flat pack method, except when you get to this part where you're all folded to the center, you're gonna do rolling. And you should always start from the top of the neckline and you should always roll it as tight as you possibly can, like this. And then, also to the width of the bag and into the bag it goes. Voila. Now the army roll is a little different. What you're going to do is you're going to take the bottom of your shirt and you're going to fold it up like this and then you're going to 
flip the shirt over like this. And then you're going to do the fold to the center. And you're also going to make sure that it matches the width of the bag. Now this is a long sleeve shirt, so I try to fold it like this. So to this side and then same here to this side like that. Now you roll it up like you would with the rolling method. Nice and tight. Like this. And then when you get to the bottom, you'll see that you have a flap and you pull that flap over your clothing like this. And you get kind of like a little burrito and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to come apart in your bag. Now this last method, which is the Kamari method, some of you might even be using at home, but if you haven't, you do the same basic fold as we started off with the flat pack, but you're now going to fold it in half this way, flip it over and the neckline, you're going to fold in about a third of the way. And then the, you flip it over and it should just stand up on its own like that. So when you put it in your bag, you put it in your bag like this, and you'll see that in this case, it's actually to the top of the bag, you see, and the width of the bag. And as you fill up the bag, you'll be able to see everything. You can just take out the item that you want. So let's see which one of those folding methods gets the most items into the bag and how you like the way the bag looks after it's packed. And before I go on to show you which folding method gets the most into your packing cubes, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below because that tells YouTube you want to see more of my content. So I'm doing the rolling method here and so far I have in the bag one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Let's zip it up. Nine in there, no problem, no bulging, will fit my suitcase nicely. So I've stuffed the bag with the flat pack method. You can see that it's totally full. And now I'm gonna do a count of the shirts. And this is eight. So I could only get eight in the flat pack, but I just took it out of my drawer and put it in here. It's easy. And now I'm gonna fill the bag with the army roll method. Eight. And that's all you're getting into this bag too, with it being easy to zip. Eight. Now using the Kamari method, I stuffed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I can zip it up. No problem. And as you see, it might be worth it to you because you can see everything nice and neatly. And all you do is just take out the one that you want for that day. And if it doesn't stink, you can put it right back in like so. So as you just saw from my demonstration, the one that got the most into the bag was just the plain roll, which is also one of the more simpler rolls. The one that kept the bag the neatest was the Kamari method. And I have to say, I like the file cabinet. Now, as an extra bonus, I'm going to show you one extra method, which combines both the best of the army roll with the best of the Kamari method. So what you do is you just make a little bend at the bottom, like you did with the rolling method, and you fold this into the center, like you would with any other method, like this. Okay. And now like with the Kamari method, you fold it in half and then you fold this and this into thirds, as you can see again, just like that. And then this time you fold over the edge and now you have a flat roll instead of a round roll. I'll show you what that looks like in the bag. So here we have it, the modified Kamari method and the count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. It's still only eight, but look at how nice and neat that is. 
and this is like what the amazing part is doesn't come apart so for those of you who have an inner monica inside of you and you like everything neat and folded together and you can see it this is the modified kamari method now this pleased the inner science teacher in me because you saw five methods of folding and you could see in one cube how many pieces you could get in there so you know which one is actually giving you the most amount of space or which one pleases you aesthetically more or which one gives you more functionality now on a final note not every method is perfect for every kind of clothing for instance here is i use that modified kamari method here but if i tried to do this with a heavy sweater it would not fold up like this i have tried and it just doesn't work and so for a heavier sweater, even the lightest of my sweaters, I basically use a flat pack because it keeps the sweater nicer and I get more sweaters per packing cube. So you have to do your own experimentation for what works for you. Well, that's it guys. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.